Today's Sunday, May 29th, 2011, and you know, on Sundays I, I always try to be, you know, thinking about the spiritual things. I do that every day, but I tell my friends on Sunday that it's absolutely what I'm going to do. And, you know, my experience now that I've been actually, <laughs> in a way, I've been doing what I'm doing right now since 1969 and I've seen a lot and I've met a lot of people and dealt with a lot of thinking and you know what some very simple things need to be understood in order for people to think straight and they just don't realize what their minds how their minds work you know I'm talking about the people that run our government and such so today what I want to do is I want to address actually probably <laughs> the most important thing that a human would need to know in terms of survival. First, obviously I believe in God. Simply put, I believe in the Declaration of Independence. I believe that all men are created equal, created by God, obviously, equal to God, equal to Jesus. That's what I believe. And I believe that they're endowed by God with these rights, right to live freely. So as long as I don't hurt people by hitting them, stealing from them in any way, shape, or form, then I'm free to do what I want. If I want to put something in my body, it doesn't matter what it is, I have the right to do that. This is my unalienable right to do that. And you know, I'm sitting here and, and we're all in America today. Why, 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 why don't people understand that? The issue for, that for me, it, that really brings it to a head, because it affects everybody, and because it's something that is very similar parallel in time, i.e. prohibition back in the 20s, 1919, for 10 years, whatever. It's the idea of, um, moralizing people's lives from a government viewpoint from anybody's viewpoint from any one group of citizens to moralize on another group in other words to supersede the declaration of independence and go into the mosaic law basically and start using that as a, a reason for saying something is illegal in other words very simply put people think that God doesn't want you to smoke reefer back in 1937. That it was immoral, that it was evil to smoke reefer. Some people were made to think that. They didn't realize they're being manipulated by people that don't give a crap about God or anything. They were just using that to manipulate people. Use playing on their fears and their moral morality. So make them think that this thing's a dangerous thing. It makes people immoral and do immoral things and stuff. And this was the stigma that was put upon cannabis back in 1937 successfully and then has driven government policies since that point and has infiltrated and you know hurt people's own thinking and you know what it's not just that issue there's a lot of other things that are going on that are affecting American citizens and it's because they don't know how to think they don't know how to recognize their own freedom First and foremost, cannabis is just a plant, all right? And for me, when I smoke cannabis, I feel God. I, I feel like I'm in touch with God, and I'm more susceptible to speaking what God would want to say. And I'm not afraid of saying it. God is with me. So what I want to talk about is the existence of Satan. And say, you know, oh, you don't believe in God, or you do believe in God. It doesn't matter what you believe. Let's put it this way, 21st century. An alien being that exists in a dimensional space. Just imagine that there's a crack in between everything. And in every one of these cracks is this creature. This creature is exactly the same in every crack. So, for example, it's just one creature in a way, but every one of those cracks 
that creature is able to do something, put out energy, put out vibrations. Okay? Because you're part of reality and in the cracks, this creature's there. There's no getting around it. Okay? Now how you can know that this creature is there is by simply using your head and taking common sense and applying it literally to the Declaration of Independence. So what I'm going to say is the people that wrote the Declaration of Independence, Jefferson mainly, they they were intelligent people, very intelligent. There's 56 signers, okay? And they signed the document that says, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, such as the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Very simple, but very profound. Because what it establishes is that we are, under the Declaration of Independence, these men are saying, There is a God. We all agree with that. We hold this as a self-evident truth. So now, if you're not, if you're in America, and you're looking at this, and you say, "Okay, that means in order for me to have unalienable rights, I have to recognize those rights come only from God. They don't come from the state. They don't come from the government. They don't come from my fellow citizens. They don't come from myself." They come from outside myself. They come from God. And these rights are endowed by this God who has created me. Right? This is necessary in order to have these unalienable rights that you believe in God. So I'm not speaking out at all negatively to say what I'm saying. I'm saying that I believe in God and I believe in my right. And my right is to smoke a plant that God has grown. God has brought this plant forth. I didn't do it. I didn't. Just like I, I didn't bring forth the meat that I eat or, the, or the, the milk that I drink. I didn't bring that forth. God has brought that forth. And this is the point of America is that in God we trust. We're under this God, this Creator. And, and if you want to have the benefit of being under the Creator endowed, then you have to buy in on it. And here's what I'm saying. How can you be negative at all about anything anybody's doing if you're part of this freedom in the Declaration of Independence? If you've accepted this and now you're inside with God endowing everyone, creating everyone, how can you say no to any person that is created or endowed? How can you say, no, don't do that, if it's nothing? You can't, because you wouldn't. It wouldn't come from you. Where does this no come from? Well, you know, statistically and, and I guess you'd say the root of it is is back in the Ten Commandments. And the concept of God that, you know, apparently was to be rejected, but still carried forth that God is this, uh, you know, rule maker. And, and I'll tell you something, there's a, there's a section in, in the scripture where people just completely missed what happened with God and with Peter. And the story is, is that just very briefly, this is in Acts, uh, Chapter 10, verse 15. Yeah, you know, rooted in the Ten Commandments because in Acts 10, verse 15, there's the angel is appearing to Peter. The story is, is that Peter goes up on the roof of this guy's house. He's staying with the guy that is a tanner, in other words, a person that uh, works on leather. Now, I don't know what the significance of that is back in the day to be with someone, but he's on the roof of the guy's house, 
and he has this vision and in this vision this angel comes down and he spreads this big sheet in front of him and on the sheet are all these animals living animals that they're not the Jews don't eat okay because of mosaic law and so the angel says to Peter kill and eat and Peter says no no I can't because it's against mosaic law so what do you think the angel says to that in other words Peter's saying no to God because of mosaic law he's saying you know our teaching from Moses is that it is forbidden to eat the cloven hooved animal or whatever the pig or whatever it is whatever animal it doesn't matter so the angel says to Peter and listen this ladies and gentlemen the angel says this three times remember Peter denied Jesus three times and then on the seashore he affirmed Jesus three times because Jesus asked him three times do you love me okay so here's a three-timer with Peter and this is what he says the angel says to Peter when Peter uses Mosaic law as a defense against obeying God and eating the forbidden thing angel says do not call profane what God has made holy do not call profane what God has made holy do not call profane what God has made holy so now why didn't Peter get exactly what that meant he only got it partially because he applied it to letting people become Christian without becoming Jews first because that was what was currently on his mind but he didn't look deep enough to realize what the angel was saying because let me ask you what is it that God does not make holy nothing everything that God makes is holy so to say to Peter do not call profane what God has made holy is really talking and addressing Mosaic law and saying that this is not the way I am God is saying I am not this way God is saying I do not call things profane God is saying do not call profane he's not saying what God has made holy because that's assumed everything is holy so God is telling Peter do not call profane it means do not accuse it means mosaic law out the window Ten Commandments bye bye and what we're left with is the two great commandments of Jesus which is to love God completely every bit which way and love your neighbors yourself which I'm saying is fulfilled in the Declaration of Independence by loving God and accepting his creativity and accepting the equal endowment in everybody you're loving God and you're loving your neighbor as yourself so I'm saying philosophically that's the position you should be in and recognizing that there are no rules with the God of Jesus really and and the feeling that there is it comes from it's rooted in Peter's un, not understanding and moving forward like that to the point right now that Peter literally is sitting in the chair in Rome at the head of the Catholic Church one billion followers oh yep one billion followers and he's teaching a lie he's teaching in the catechism that if you commit fornication and you die without reconciliation you will go to hell 